there is a very famous quote by mother teresa that i cannot change the whole world but i can cast a stone in waters to create more ripples hi my dear friends i am so very excited because today on episodes of story makers i bring to you one such visionary leader who has definitely brought about change in the society there is um, a famous saying that you know if you are a leader you want to bring a lot of a lot of change and yes make difference and here we have today our very important guest for uh, who has definitely brought a change and his name is dr ram prasad manohar he is an ias officer and he is also the chairman for bangalore water supply now very important thing that i would like to tell you that he is one person who has brought the transformation during bangalore water crisis there is a lot that i have to ask him let's just go on to him a very warm welcome to you Namaste. mr manohar uh, well i would like to start with very important question now bangalore faced this uh, big thing which is a water crisis now water is a very very important thing and this very unpredictable crisis that happened in bangalore uh, brought about such a havoc on the society i would like to know that you as a chairman for bangalore water supply for you it was a big thing how did you manage that whole crisis what all you implemented and how have you managed to brought about this change uh, bangalore is a third largest city in india mm -hmm. having 1 crore 40 lakhs people in the city having a, such a population it was having about the requirement of 2600 million liters of uh, water per day Uh, suddenly, when uh, the rainfall failed, mm -hmm. the underground water level has come down sharply. Therefore, there was a huge crisis in the city. And during the crisis, I have been posted as chairman of Bangalore Water Supply Board to solve the crisis. So, the moment I took charge as a chairman Bangalore Water Supply Board, I have been facing lot of complaints from various corners of the city. and uh, lot of political leaders keep coming to my office mm -hmm. and they were saying that uh, uh, the bangalore water supply board has miserably failed to take the uh, citizens need of supplying water having understood the situation i felt that this is not the failure of bangalore water supply board mm -hmm. it is natural uh, calamity and that we have to tackle as a team so we have taken lot of steps we have understood that the crisis is Uh, not due to the administrative crisis of bengaluru jal board it is due to the natural calamity mm -hmm. and we thought we have to take innovative way and means to solve this crisis mm -hmm. uh, because water deficit which has happened due to the sharp rainfall deficit cannot be overcome just by uh, bringing more water mm -hmm. we need an innovative solutions technological solutions and people participation that's how we manage the crisis and uh, we are right now at the comfort of uh, situations I am so sure that you've done so much, and what all measures that you took. But I would like you to be very specific with what was the first step that you took, because you know, not having water at all is a huge thing. Now, this complete crisis must have you know brought about totally havoc in the whole uh, Bangalore. Now, how did you manage that particular moment? What did you See, do as the first step? I worked in my previous stint as a district collector of Bellary district, so I have. i have first hand experience in dealing with the people in the yeah. crisis because you know the illegal mining of bellary so yeah. during that time i was the district manage magistrate i i went there and uh, solved the social economic crisis of uh, the illegal mining impact therefore i had an experience as a crisis manager mm -hmm. so when i first took the charge of chairman bangalore water supply board i realized that there is a acute shortage of water about 500 million liters of water mm -hmm. per day it's a huge Uh, supply sure. gap about 25% of the total requirement so whenever there is a gap mm -hmm. the the first and foremost sections of the society which will be affected will be the socially economically underprivileged society mm -hmm. who generally lives in uh, slum areas and the lower income group areas right. so when the supply chain is disrupted the first and foremost uh, affecting people would be that right. those people only right. then we understood that they were not getting the water on time mm -hmm. at the quantity which they are required mm -hmm. so we thought that in bengaluru jal board our primary aim is to uh, protect the interest of the socio economically underprivileged sections of society to the short term crisis management so we have installed about 1700 million uh, mini water uh, mm -hmm. supply schemes 
it obviously means a 2000 liter to 10000 liters of syntax tanks mm -hmm. fitted in each streets of um, slum areas and the lower income economic living area and uh, that will be fitted with an iot sensors mm -hmm. so that we will be able to know whether the water is filled in the tank or not that can be centrally monitored mm -hmm. and uh, to fill that tanks we have deployed about uh, 800 odd uh, gps fitted uh, small tankers okay that will have a three times minimum uh, filling in each uh, tank and in case if they have been uh, utilized fully then the sensor will send us the signal that that particular tanker has uh, uh, depleted so our team will go and supply the water in that tank so people it will serve minimum uh, 20 to 50 household in the nearby area mm -hmm. that way there will not be overcrowding in that uh, mini water supply scheme and uh, it is neighbor to near to their house it's free of cost the people are uh, safe uh, feeling safe and mm -hmm. secure when the water is available in the nearest place suppose if i send a tanker and directly supply to uh, the people those who are having muscle power those who are having voice only get the water but in this mini water supply schemes which we have in implemented within 15 days about 1700 uh, mini supply schemes in each uh, uh, slum area that has given a larger impact to short time crisis management that's how uh, mm -hmm. the poor and urban uh, slum dwellers got their justice uh, for water you did a wonderful uh, i think this was a great innovation bringing about 1700 syntax tanks now this is a great thing and specifically when you are saying that you worked initially for the slum area now this comes from a you know a, a leader like you that you've done so good uh, especially you thought of them at first now you've also said that you've used technology now ai is one thing that you've been using as a technology how has that helped you is it a good way like when since that you've implemented it has it come out well yeah actually uh, I, I told that uh, the current crisis which has created was mainly due to the shortage of rainfalls right. so when a city like bengaluru having lot of uh, uh, congratulation and over urbanization the percolation of water is very very minimal that's mm -hmm. how uh, the percolation was very minimal and uh, the rainfall is also short that has coupled and led to a lot of bore wells are getting failed right. so knowing very well that the 50 percent bore wells are getting failed we want to safeguard the existing bore wells at least to safeguard the bore wells so we thought that when bore wells are switched on people are not knowing that whether the borals are having water or not because it is under the ground so people may not realize that Correct. so we have put a sensor iot sensor and an artificial intelligence system uh -huh. so that whenever the water level goes below a threshold level uh -huh. automatically it will send a signal to the pump system it will switch off the pump that will be known to our central dashboard by implementing this artificial intelligence enabled iot sensors we will be able to uh, prevent the drying of the borals due to over exploitation mm -hmm. so that's how about uh, uh, 15000 borewells have been saved that has become a kind of no uh, mitigating uh, the water crisis in the local level that's how we use the technology of um, ai enabled iot sensors to prevent the borewells getting failed over time no wonder ai has the new technology which has come and it's really helping and that you proved as well now Moving further, I would like to know that you've also been uh, into treated water usage. Now, please tell us that Bangalore is one of this pioneering uh, city that has been using this treated water. How do you manage that and how do you implement the whole thing? How do you use this water? See, whenever we use fresh water that is getting mixed with sewage and it is considered as a wastage. Mm -hmm. Like where what we drink water, then the urine is coming out. Correct. Like that any city which consumes water will always excrete about 80% of the water, so sewage. Mm -hmm. So that 80% water will be treat, uh, treated and those treated water will be let down in the nalas, natural nalas mm -hmm. for the uh, water bodies. Mm -hmm. But uh, this particular water can be effectively utilized for other purposes. Wow. Like you see any western countries where Singapore uh, also, mm -hmm. they use this treated water effectively. Mm -hmm. So we have understood that that particular resource, the treated water is being let down in the nalas without any use to the human purposes. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring that treated water into the uses of the human purposes, especially for non-drinking purposes. Because in mm -hmm. India, uh, people are used to drink uh, fresh water. Yeah. So they have a taboo of using the treated water. That's mm -hmm. a human behavioral issues also right. coupled with that. Uh, that's why we thought that this particular treated water can be effectively utilized 
for three primary purposes. One is for the commercial cleaning purposes, mm -hmm. then secondary for the construction purposes, mm -hmm. thirdly for industrial mm -hmm. uses and IT park uses. So mm -hmm. that way we are able to uh, bring uh, teeter water to the reuse, uh, about 20% of the water can be utilized effectively at this time. So we have started with about 60,000 liters per day, the teeter water. When we uh, initiated within 15 days, we could be able to increase the usage by about 60 lakhs uh, liter of uh, titer water in industries uh, for the purpose of non-domestic purposes. That's how we are able to uh, bring down the demand on fresh water and also able to earn the income from the titer water for the board. That's how it's a win-win situation for everybody. What a great thought and you know, uh, this is, I get to hear from you that you can use a water which is absolutely of no use. We cannot even think of using that water but how have you made a use of this for commercial purposes? It's a great thing. And is this only happening in Bangalore or it has moved on to other cities as well? So basically, uh, we are the pioneer in uh, bringing the uh, usage of the street water in an extensive manner. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, we have a scheme uh, to supply the street water to filling the lakes actually. Okay. Because the lakes uh, uh, during rainy season, they get water. Okay. But during the summer season, there is no source There's for the lakes to be filled. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know the lakes are the important aquifers, mm -hmm. it need to be filled regularly so that the underground water will be recharged. So what we thought that we will bring this data water to fill the lakes mm -hmm. and uh, this particular initiative was taken by Bengaluru uh, city jal board and about 20 lakes uh, have been filled on a pilot basis and that has resulted in increase in the ground water level. And in fact these have been approved by the uh, government of India uh, as a best initiative for uh, filling the natural bodies with the treated water and augmenting the treated water system. So again, the brain behind this process was you only? It was you? Yeah, entirely. it's a team effort and uh, I was uh, pioneering that moment. Yeah. Wonderful. So my dear friends, we are here sharing this stage with somebody who has brought about such a great way of having sustainable management in water crisis. Now there is a lot that I need to ask and I move further. Uh, when it comes to water, you know, the water that we drink, we need to be very sure the quality of water that you're providing, not that you being in the water supply, you're the chairman of it. How do you manage to have that quality assurance? Yeah, it's very important to ensure the quality of the water. When there is a crisis hit you, people tend to use the polluted water also for yes. their regular uses. Mm -hmm. So we are very conscious of the health impact of a fresh water and a good quality water. So right now, the yeah, standard procedures which we are following in Bengaluru Jal Board is an international standard. Mm -hmm. So we produce a good quality water for the consumption purposes. Even for that matter, teeter water. Mm -hmm. When initially, when I went and told the people to use the teeter water, they told that this water may contain a bacteria. Mm -hmm. So they are very apprehensive, especially these IT parks. Uh, they were using this water for the cooling purpose of their uh, centralized air conditions. Mm -hmm. Like Delhi, Delhi, you are using air condition extensively yeah. during summer. Extensively. So. Uh, during the summer, people wanted to use air condition. Mm -hmm. For that also, they need a cooling water. Mm -hmm. So when we told that you use a treated water for your cooling tower, then they told that it may contain bacteria. Mm -hmm. Then we have reached out to Indian Institute of Science. Mm -hmm. uh, we told this is a problem for us uh, to use in the treated water in the cooling systems. Then uh, the Indian Institute of Science have come up with a traditional technology of chlorination and dechlorination mm -hmm. to produce a zero bacterial water. This was piloted in a small scale, about 1 lakh liter. Then we are able to scale it up to 1 crore liter per day production of zero bacterial water, which is primarily uh, contains uh, zero E. coli and that can be very well used for the purposes of cooling towers of air conditions, centralized air conditions and other uh, commercial uh, purposes where human is in contact with the teacher water. So I also know that you brought about this aerator's uh, installation. You made it mandatory in commercial complexes and government uh, organizations as well. Now, what is it all about and how does this work? Please tell us that. See, I have already told that there are about uh, 500 milliliters of uh, water deficit in the system. Yes. So, uh, water is a one uh, great thing mm -hmm. which we rarely appreciate mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, when we went to uh, mission of moon or mission of Mars, we always look out for water mm -hmm. because water is the one which cannot be created in any uh, laboratories. Correct. So uh, that water need to be conserved. Mm -hmm. So when your water can, when fresh water cannot be created, then existing water should be conserved. Correct. Based on that idea, we thought that uh, the usage of we analyze the usage pattern of water. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. In a domestic usage, hardly about 50% water is used for the human consumption and the cooking purposes and the cleaning purposes, uh, bathing purposes. Whereas the remaining 50% goes for cleaning purposes and flushing the toilets and washing the hands. Mm -hmm. So we thought that that remaining 50% of cleaning purposes water can be saved by putting a small device called aerator. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but a mask to the taps. Mm -hmm. So when we mm -hmm. used taps in the COVID uh, to prevent ourselves from getting contaminated from the COVID viruses, similar thing, this particular mask is only mm -hmm. to prevent the water being uh, flowing in an excess quantity when we are using it. Uh, how much so required, that much only should be used. Uh -huh. So when we are opening the ta tab for brushing the teeth or washing the hands, the water is also going down wastely. So we mm -hmm. put an aerator which is costing about 30 rupees to 50 rupees per tab. Okay. But this particular small uh, aerators or flow restrictors can save about 80% of the water you save. Wonderful. So that has given us a very good uh, impact for us. And apart from that, we want to inculcate the habit of conservation in the minds of people. Mm -hmm. For that, we have introduced a regulatory measures. Mm -hmm. We have imposed penalty of about 5,000 rupees for misuse of water. Misuse mm -hmm. of water means when the people are struggling for drinking water, a person who is washing his car with the fresh water mm -hmm. is an, it's a social crime. So there is a provision under the Act to prevent such a misuse. So we have imposed the penalties about... Uh, 436 people have been penalized and about 21 lakhs have been collected uh, from the penalizing activity. More than the money or the more than the number of people who have been penalized for misuse of water, it sends a signal that we are serious about water usage. Yes. And people should be sincere and uh, uh, mindful of their uh, usage rather than wasting during the crisis. That's what the message we sent. So both usage of the aerator and uh, using the regulatory measure, we are able to conserve more fresh water, which can be equally distributed among the people who are in the need. Indeed. What a wonderful way. And here I would like to speak to my audience here. Now, water is one very, very important thing. Now, aerators is, was just a 30 rupees uh, investment and you can save about 80% of water. I mean, you cannot, you know, be just denying the fact that water is necessary and what are ma major things that uh, Mr. Manohar has been doing. He's brought about so much change. And we as human beings, we really need to see that world needs water. We are, our body is made of water and it's really needed. And this is the hour that we should all take care of this, uh, that it is needed. Now that you've been doing so much, there is a lot that I would like to ask. Now here as a community, now people when they saw you that you brought about this change in this hour of crisis, how did they react? I'm sure they must have been very, very happy. And of course, the moment was also sad and very, very disruptive. But at that particular moment, uh, I also know that you started uh, Jal Mitra Yojana. Would you please talk about that? Yeah, very well uh, being told. Uh, when the crisis uh, hit the Bengaluru, uh, people are very apprehensive. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, such crisis happens, always people turn as an anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. So uh, initially, it started with the negative publicity. A lot of social influencers started... Uh, uh, tweaking, tweeting negativity about this kind of crisis. Then uh, I realized that mm -hmm. uh, we as a jail board, as an officer alone or as a team of officials alone cannot uh, handle this crisis all alone. All right. Then exactly. I realized that we have to partner with the people because the current crisis is not about the mall administration of the Bengaluru jail board. Mm -hmm. It is about the natural calamity. Okay. It is about the responsibility of the citizen to be part of sustainable measures. Mm -hmm. uh, so petition, citizens should be conscious and they should be part of this initiative. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have initiated a, an immediate step of enrolling volunteers. I also realized that in the society, there are a lot of goodwill people who mm -hmm. wanted to positively contribute, mm -hmm. not only to negatively publicize, also positively contribute to the mm -hmm. uh, problem, solution, problem solving uh, methodologies. Correct. Then we have reached out to uh, communities uh, initially, we have uh, engaged with the Bangalore Apartment Federations, Kredai Residential Associations, then FKCCA. So various bodies of associations have been uh, initially uh, consulted. Then we have taken their support as a partner in our initiative to solve the crisis. From based on that first level of communication and second level, we reached directly to the uh, members of those associations. So the big, we are able to get their support also. Then we thought that we need a voluntary support system. Mm. So uh, in a city of 1 crore 40 lakhs people, managing with the 5,000 employees will not be the easy solution. Mm. Then we put in every ward minimum about uh, uh, 
ट्वेंटी वॉलंटियर्स हैव बीन एनरोल्ड सो बेंगलुरु इज हैविंग अबाउट टू हंड्रेड एंड आर्ड वार्ड्स इन द सिटी सो वी स्टार्ट विद ट्वेंटी देन लेटर इट बिकम अ फार्टी वॉलंटियर्स इन ईच वार्ड दे विल हैव अ इंटरनल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटिंग अवर मेजर्स रीचिंग आउट टू द सोसाइटी एंड एक्सप्लेनिंग द नीड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन एक्सप्लेनिंग नीड ऑफ वाटर कंजर्वेशन uh these volunteers have been enrolled about 10000 jalmitras they have been volunteered and they have been part of this success so i thank all the our uh, team of officials and the association members and the jalmitras who are partnering with us in uh, solving this crisis into an opportunity what a wonderful thing uh, now you also made me here to think that you know in any hour of crisis if if like while we saw covid now everybody came together they wanted to help each other now this community like you approach and of course you got good response this is one of the best steps they could have done and because of that that they could manage the whole crisis because you were doing something the the other people were doing something and of course community had to come up now uh, getting to know from a leaders like you that there is so much that you are doing and that there is so much that we as citizens also need to do is a great thing now through this show of ours story makers i'm sure there are a lot of people who are listening and watching this show you know that water is important and that what you need to do but lastly although i have so much to ask but then i would like to ask you this last and final questions now this you as an individual you are an ias officer and of course you're a chairman and of course you've been handling a lot of crises as per the uh, you know uh, community thing and stuff but when it comes to you as a person how do you manage crises for yourself how do you manage yourself and one that thing that you manage for yourself of course would be an advice to everyone how do do how do we manage ourselves in times of crisis see i believe in gandhi ji's words the change has to come from within yes yeah. and uh, during the crisis as a team leader first of all i should be calm and composed mm-hmm. if i am not an calm and composed if i am able to pass on the uh, pressure to the team below then they will also be naturally stressed so as a leader as a team leader i have to manage my composure mm-hmm. and i have to identify the positive support i am getting from every corner i should amplify those supports yes. be it our subordinate official be it our technical staff be it our ground staff be it our uh, citizen uh, ngos or citizen organizations so we have to take everybody is in on board so the calm and composed attitude of my nature has helped me to bring all the uh, positive elements of the society and push for the solutions and come out in successful manner what a wonderful advice and what a wonderful way of being the way you are thank you so very much for being here on our show of story makers you really brought about such a great thing for us to think about and um, once again thank you thank you very much thank you and my dear audience i'm coming back to you again telling you the same thing that water is important and yes a leader like him that just now told that you have to be calm and composed so what are you thinking in every moment of crisis you have to be calm and composed and you know you get the result but do remember water is important try and save it till then when i come and meet you soon with another guest stay blessed and stay happy